The Counterfeiters, or Die Felsche, the 2007 movie review and thoughts. I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I largely loved. And, uh, yeah, uh, this video will have... Yeah, I'll, I'll be discussing serious topics in this. If you're looking for a view that is like the movie doesn't really hold up, it's been outdone by little movies, because of that it's not that much fun to watch today, and or it's different from the source material, so it sucks. Whether you agree with those assessments or not, this is not that review. I realize this video is long, and I can't make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything. If I decide over the course of it that I do want to spoil something, I'm going to verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done spoiling so you can mute and skip ahead and you see me lower my index finger. Once I end the review itself and get into the thought sections, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. So this movie is rated R... The, uh, let's see, yes, the MPAA rated it R for some strong violence, brief sexuality, nudity, and language. And the IMDb Parents Guide rates sex and nudity as moderate, same for alcohol, drugs, and smoking, profanity is mild, violence and gore, and frightening and intense scenes are severe. It's one of those cases, there's a lot of... There's a lot of brutality towards the prisoners of the concentration camps. Not all of it is shown in graphic detail. Some of it is. It appears that they, when they were making the movie, they put a lot of thought into not, what's the word, um, not making it excessive, not numbing the audience. And... Right, uh, some people do say that the violence is too frequent. Some say it's, you know, oh, it's like they're, you know, they're worried that people will forget, you know, how bad concentration camps were if they don't constantly show it. I think it's important to keep in mind the movie is not super long, so the amount of brutality, you know, it is set over years, so it's the the frequency of the brutality, and it is fairly high, is to make sure that we never. It's it's, I suppose, and not so much that we never forget, but to underline that it was inescapable for the inmates, for the for the prisoners of these camps. Now I have watched this. I guess this this has to be at least my third or fourth viewing and let's see my first viewing was in 2010 and yeah uh, plot I'm just gonna quote IMDb here the story of Operation Bernard the largest counterfeiting operation in history carried out by Germany during World War two now some people have taken issue with the fact that you don't get as much information here as you do from watching a documentary about it. I understand their frustration. I don't really think, given that there are documentaries, I don't think it's necessary for movies like this to also include all this information. I really think it would have bogged down the narrative, and clearly the narrative, the emotional engagement which, in my opinion, lasts for the vast majority of the movie, perhaps falters slightly near the very end. That was what they were going for, and I think that was the right choice. I would agree if, like, let's say when they made this, they also destroyed all copies of the documentary, then I'd be like, okay, that's, you know, this way, this means that we don't have as much information about it in readily available you know, but that isn't what happened, so. Now, the, let's see. 
yes, I recommend reviews from critics and users. The first five pages, at least, on Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, except the low-rated ones, and the top 100 on IMDb, except the low-rated ones. This was based on the book by Adolf Bürger, who appears, you know, not the, not the person, but the, yeah, it is, it is basically his autobiography, and, yeah, as such, Adolf Bürger appears as a character in this movie, though not the protagonist, interestingly enough, that's, you know, often the, the case, and the screenplay was written by Stefan Rusawitsky, who also directed, and let's see, yeah, um, both uh, were born in Austria. I have to admit, this is the only thing I've seen by Stefan. I think I'll. I don't mean to imply that I know him personally. But I really doubt I can do his last name justice. So, Stefan, it is. I would like to watch some of the other stuff he's he's directed. But yeah, I am not able to compare. This is also. I, I'm not sure I know any of the the cast from anything else. Not, yeah. Now, it is not a surprise that this German, you know, Austrian slash German co production German movie, especially given that it came out during the German movie self flagellation phase, where they dealt with the worst aspects of their recent past, especially Nazis, but also their role in the Soviet Union, you know, East Germany. Which I'm not saying I don't understand why they went through, nor am I saying they shouldn't have. But this movie does, of course, not feature nuanced or sympathetic depictions of Nazis. If you want that sort of thing, at least around this t same time, you'd have to go to Hollywood. Here they are exclusively cruel sadists who take every opportunity to humiliate any Jewish prisoner that they can't outright execute at the time. And this is, of course, a reflection of the fact that the Nazis were some of history's biggest monsters, and you'll find no apologies or excuses made for them in this or any video of mine. It is, however, quite revealing that the propaganda currently being spread by Zionists has not merely... It's not merely the same, but actually an even higher intensity of hatred towards Palestinians claiming that even the children are, if not currently dangerous, they should at least be treated as if it is likely that they will be dangerous in the future, insisting that hospitals are reasonable military targets rather than, you know, just trying to keep people alive. And it's actually a war crime to target them. Keep in mind, the IDF are not occasionally accidentally hitting these hospitals. They are deliberately bombing them. If it surprises you to hear me talk that way about Israel, welcome to the channel. And let's see the yeah, this is a, a decent time to bring up the results of some research that I did, so that I am aware that some people consider it offensive to criticize Israel on Holocaust Remembrance Day and I do not make this decision lightly. The problem is that while the Jewish people themselves are not like Nazis but Zionism as an ideology isn't you know yeah the the it is a form of colonialism same as nazi ideology and yeah you know both target children and act as though this entire group regardless of anything else about them are dangerous and have to be contained it is true that 
the the Israel yeah the IDF are not treating the Palestinians the exact same way as the Nazis treated the Jews as far as I've been able to tell from from research they're pretty much pushing it as far as they feel they can get away with and let's see yeah the right um back to the movie the actors actually did learn how the the machines worked for the sake of authenticity you know the the machines for making bills and let's see the fact that the Jewish prisoners for Operation Bernard have much better conditions than other Jewish other Jews in concentration camps underlines the fact that this was absolutely something that the Nazis chose to force on the Jews. It was not, oh, they just didn't have better places for them to live, you know, which some apologists for Nazis and outright Nazis today claim. It's, you know, and, and yeah, after all, before the Jews were put in camps, they lived in towns and cities across the various countries that they were taken and, and put in camps. And... Yeah, so, so as far as the erection goes, <clears throat> the movie makes the choice to use this very documentary style, which I have not seen very many other, you know concentration camp and and Nazi in general movies do which certainly does make it distinct like this is one of those cases where you can actually you know watch a short clip of this and even if you don't know anything else you'll be able to tell okay that's definitely not you know one of those various other movies that that have this so I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits with what came before. And I think the ending is good. In my opinion, it does not quite have the intended impact. And I don't base this only on my own personal experience. I've watched this with others who care deeply about the subject matter. And that, yeah, uh, let's see. I've shown it to two other people, and both of them also felt that the ending was not... Yeah. I was not able to get a copy to, to read or listen through of the, the book that this is based on, so I'm afraid I cannot make any um, statements about the... Yeah, how it is as an adaptation of it. So briefly on the characters, Karl Markovich stars as Solomon Sally Sorowich, and he is a very hardened individual. This is is evident from from right away, and the we are told later in the movie why that is, and basically it is this thing of before the the before he was put in a concentration camp he yeah he made these counterfeit bills and because of the how good he is at that that's actually part of why he i guess the only reason actually why he's even made part of operation bernard and he, yeah, he starts out very much looking out for himself. And there are these glimpses of his humanity, of, of as much as he tries to suppress it, of him trying to help people who are in a similar or even worse situation than himself. And let's see, right, and, and some have taken this as saying, as, as victim blaming, as, you know, basically saying, yeah, 
victim blaming. And I have to disagree. I, I don't really s read the movie that way, and certainly it would be terrible to victim blame. You know, pretty under pretty much any circumstances, you know. And, yeah, August Diel plays Adolf Bürger, and, yeah, he does a, a really great job. Some have pointed out he's kind of a, a saint. He's very he's a very one-note character, and there's not that much to him, which might be how he wrote the, you know, how the actual Adolf Bürger wrote him himself in the book, which, you know, one can understand, you know, wanting to, to, yeah, give a really positive depiction of oneself when it's a situation like that, you know, not, not wanting anyone to be able to read into it, oh, it was, you know, he was partly to blame or something. But, you know, August does as well as he can at making the character more interesting that's what, than what's on the page, and I think he fares quite well. I acknowledge that, you know, some, some say he's a fairly frustrating character. You know, there is some, some truth to that, and overall it would maybe have been better if the... the yeah, if it was a little more daring is he, in his characterization. And, you know, he's the only character with that much screen time that's that one note of a character. It's possible, you know, the, the actual Adolf Bjorga died in 2016, R.I.P. It's possible that, that if this movie had been made after his death, maybe it would have been fair, but you know who's who's going to be the person to tell this 90 year old man you know by the way we're making a movie about you you're going to come across as kind of an asshole you know that's uh, yeah and let's see that might be about what I want to say about the characters, um, yes, so, the, let's see, yeah, uh, understandably, the movie does depict anti-Semitism, uh, you know, both the, the, in the time leading up to the the time that these characters spent these people spent in concentration camps and the yeah during obviously it is difficult for me to comment on the dialogue because i do not speak german i do read subtitles and yeah um it seems like the 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 dialogue has a, a good amount of nuance to it and it comes across as well delivered as best as i can tell again not speaking the language there are two entries in the mdb quote section and both of them are good so, yeah, the, the documentary style, of course, means handheld camera. I think that there's good and bad. It's, you know, overall, I personally do prefer traditional cinematography, steady cam, tripod, that sort of thing. But the, yeah, um, there definitely is... A, a certain authenticity and just sense of, of it feels like you're right there with the characters because of the handheld that that yeah that is one of the major reasons why some people do choose handheld and I do think 
that choice makes a lot of sense here. I think if the movie was like half an hour or 40 minutes longer than it is, it would probably feel just kind of exhausting to, to watch. But yeah, you know, it's it's not the movie isn't long and it also doesn't feel long. And yeah, I, I think they made the, the right choice. And that brings us to Okay, there we go. Yes, um, this was made on a budget of $6.25 million, and the box office was $20.2 million. And, which, you know, again, makes sense. This was, I, it's possible that it wouldn't have done quite as well today, but at the time, you know, yeah, Germany was making a lot of these movies. You know, in, in addition to this, you have stuff like The Lives of Others, which, you know, that, that is based on East Germany. You know, you have the... the I want to say it wasn't... Uh, how do you spell that? Bader... Yeah, Bader Meinhof Complex, also East Germany. You have stuff like Sophie Joll, you know, yeah, during World War II, set during World War II. Der Untergang, also World War II. I think those might be about... Oh, right, right, and of course... Um, yeah, I guess it's called Before the Fall. Some places it's known as Napola. And, and to be clear, these are all very, very well-made movies, worth watching each, at least once each. And this was filmed, let's see, yeah, there was some studio filming for this, but they did also film some in France, Monte Carlo, Vienna, and... Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, that is it. And this does add a lot of authenticity to it. Yeah, it's a very authentic film in various different ways. The music is quite effective. The sound design is really good. There's some scenes where, like, if not for the sound design, they wouldn't really hit, pun intended, such as beatings of prisoners and such, where, you know, if you know enough about how movies are made, you know they're not actually, you know, they're not going to beat someone on camera. That's literally illegal. And, yeah, you know, if not for the, the sound design, especially considering the handheld photography where there's sometimes not that many cuts so it's really just it's showing an actor pretending to hit another actor you know it, it looks fairly convincing but it's the sound that really sells it and yeah so in total this movie is Hold on, I had it right there. There we go. It is 91 minutes if you don't count the end credits, 94 and a half minutes if you do, and there's nothing during the end credits. You know, if you just need it to be over, you can just stop watching at that point. And yeah, um, the best elements of this probably ex the exploration of Nazi anti Semitism. And this very unusual story, like, um, I don't think I know of another, you know, please put in the comments if, if you know of one. I, I think, um, I certainly don't remember having watched any other movie set during World War II in a concentration camp where the Jews are at least slightly more complex you know, certainly 
soul is is slightly more complex. And you know, Adolf isn't especially, but soul is not the only one. There are others where, yeah, and this thing of you know, they're actually there's this the um, this moral dilemma where they talk about you know if we it's Adolf mentions if we the the if we make all these bills that's going to help the Nazis and you know Saul points out are you suggesting we perform sabotage in a concentration camp you know and that is a legitimately interesting concept that and and you know certainly operation bernhard existed that that much is absolute fact i don't know with certainty if the the i, f I feel like i've heard somewhere that there was at the very least discussion amongst the the prisoners and this is a first hand account <clears throat> let's keep in mind you know that yeah they did discuss the possibility of of resisting and let's see yeah the worst aspect is probably it's either that some of the characters are somewhat one note or the fact that just I've heard some say and I think that's going too far I've heard some call the movie soulless that's at a 10 in my opinion it's more like at a 2 but I'm not gonna claim that there's nothing like that and you know the the you know, a movie like Schindler's List, for example, does not at all feel soulless. You know, there are characters in it that are soulless, but the movie itself, you know, yeah. Now, something I saw others say that they found frustrating about the movie, that it doesn't really break any new ground for the Holocaust concentration camp subgenre, yeah, I, I cannot argue with that. Um, it wasn't something that really bothered me. But obviously, if that's a big part of, you know, what you would want from something like this, yeah, you know, it's not... There's a lot of other movies like this, and many of them came out before this one, so one can understand. I, I think they just felt that the 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 story the moral dilemma and the documentary style would make up for the fact because yeah otherwise yeah you know i already mentioned there's a lot of scenes of brutality inside the camp a staple of the subgenre you know there are you know some of the time the the they're allowed a little bit of of entertainment you know, very, very little, very little freedom and such. You know, there's a portion of the movie where the protagonist is being introduced to other, you know, yeah, inmates in the concentration camp. Yeah, you know, the, the yeah, some leisure activity. It's, it's a lot of what we've seen elsewhere. And, let's see, yeah, so the thing I was most worried about before watching, based on some of what I'd heard, it sounded like it made World War II Jews look as bad or worse than the Nazis. Thankfully, that's completely out of, yeah, I, I don't know how anyone ended up with that. You know, uh, actually, I think I do. So I've already mentioned that I have tremendous empathy for Jews, you know, really any Jew that isn't a Zionist, and honestly, young Zionists, I can appreciate, you know, a lot of them have been indoctrinated. A lot of them just, they don't know enough 
to to realize how bad what they're doing what the what the ideology is responsible for doing to the Palestinians you know I I can appreciate that but with that said I do think that there are some people who basically look at this situation as at, at you know the way the Nazis treated the Jews and say we can't say anything negative about the Jews at all to be clear nothing could possibly ever justify what was done I just don't think at least not this long after I can appreciate that right after the Holocaust and certainly with some people you know with some people you you, you let's see you give them an inch they take a mile you can't at all but I don't think that it's beneficial I, I don't think it helps people who have been victimized or whose family whose whose kind have been victimized to claim that they're just flawless because that can lead some people to think oh the reason that it's wrong is because they were flawless not just it's wrong regardless there's there's nothing anyone can do that would make it okay for them to be treated the way the Nazis treated the Jews or the way that the IDF are treating the Palestinians if you end up thinking the reason it was wrong is because they were flawless then when someone points out well I mean there weren't quite flawless and no one is Jews the, the Jewish see apparently neo-Nazis have ruined like I 100% understand why saying the Jew that's that's literally that's how the Nazis refer to them so obviously that's you know that implies that you know basically there's this hive mind Borg thing all of them are dangerous kind of thing but apparently now if you just say Jewish that's also wrong you have to specify you mean Jewish people because now just saying Jewish is dehumanizing. I I really hate how conservatives are always ruining language. To be clear, if I at any point say Jewish and not Jewish people, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not trying to use Nazi rhetoric. To return to my point, yes, obviously, you know, everybody has at least some flaws Jewish people are not inherently worse than any other people you are not worse for your ethnicity or the ideology that you were taught as you know yeah when you were growing up now the let's see yes the thing I was most looking forward to was yeah, this very different story, and yeah, I I thought that it was interesting throughout. The trailers give at least a little bit too much away, but also give you a pretty good idea of what the movie is like. The cover, some of the covers and posters do give at least a little bit too much away, but do also give you a good idea of what the movie is like. And that brings us to Rotten Tomatoes, where it has a 93%. So certified fresh. Uh, of the 127 reviews, 118 of them are fresh. And the average score is 7.80 out of 10. The audience score is 88% based on more than 10,000 ratings. The average rating is 4 out of 5. Critics consensus, The Counterfeiters is a gripping account of one prisoner's moral dilemma superbly portrayed by Karl Markovic. And on Metacritic, it has a 78 out of 100 from critics based on 23 reviews, all of them positive. Yeah, the lowest rated gave it a 67 out of 100. 
and users gave it a 7.7 .7 based on 30 user ratings. 24 of them are positive, 6 are mixed. And there's only, yeah, of the four Metacritic user reviews, there's only one that is mixed. And, yeah, um, it's not even that negative of a review. It is just, yeah, the, the, let's see. Right, so yeah, basically the, the most negative thing they say is the, the this person feels that Stefan's direction does very well with his work, but fails to convey emotion to a film that without a sense of danger and a certain fear looks very much like a dramatization for documentary. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go that far, but there's definitely... Yeah, as I mentioned, you know, some some people feel that it is a soulless movie, and that's basically more or less what that. Yeah, so it currently has a seven point five out of ten on IMDb based on forty seven thousand ratings. Thirty eight point two percent gave it eight. Twenty nine point seven gave it seven. 13.1 gave it 9, 8.4 gave it 6, 6.4 gave it 10, 2.3 gave it 5, 0 0.7 gave it 4, another 0 0.7 gave it 1, 0 0.4 gave it 3, 0 0.2 gave it 2. And there are currently only 127 IMDb reviews, or 87 if you hide spoilers. Yeah, this is not quite as well known as some of the, the earlier mentioned and let's see yeah there are 118 links in the IMDb external reviews section the movie doesn't have a huge amount of effects but there is some you know I, I mentioned there's some yeah some of the brutality does get graphic and they have effects for that usually practical effects and yeah they're they're quite convincing and i think that is about what i right there's some there's some quite good stunt work and yeah i mentioned that the the violence is not always graphic i do think that it is always effective you know there's definitely parts where like if you just showed you know, certain clips that imply violence, you know, to someone who hadn't watched the entire movie and didn't know, they might think, oh, it's like a PG-13 movie. But, yeah, it's always effective. And, you know, thankfully, overall, not a PG-13. It would be ridiculous. I feel like I... Is there at least one... I feel like I've heard of at least one PG-13 concentration camp movie. I forget if I watched it, but that does seem completely ridiculous. There's no way you can do the subject matter justice with a PG-13 limitation. Now, the DVD, at least the one I have, has three and a half minutes of deleted scenes and ten minutes of behind the scenes. And, yeah, um, both are well worth watching if you already have access to the movie I, I wouldn't say to get the the DVD unless it's like on sale it's not one of those where you gotta have it you know comparatively the the there's at least some releases of the um, I can't believe I'm blanking on the uh, Schindler's List out there that have significant, yeah, some some really really powerful behind the scenes. Er, yeah, some of it behind the scenes, some of it like documentary about the actual events that have nothing to do with the the production of the movie and and such, or at least don't focus on production of the movie. Yeah, 
I rate this an 8 out of 10. And I do think that it holds up. You know, as mentioned earlier, I watched it three years after it came out. It's now been 17 years since it came out. You know, I, I don't think it has aged poorly at all. And I do think that this is one of those movies that, like, it, it's it's not necessarily that it deserves better because it got a quite good reception. But I, it, it is very, like, the fact that there's that few reviews is, is yeah, very... You know, on, on both Metacritic and IMDb, very few user reviews, comparatively. You know, there's there's other movies from around the same time, from, yeah, from the same time, that have much more, and, yeah. That is what I have to say about that. So that is the end of the review and the start of the thoughts sections. So... Yeah. Notes taken while watching. And, yeah. You know, so the movie opens, you know, showing how things were after World War II for um, Seoul, Sally. And some people really take issue with this. I don't really think that it's a movie about whether or not Saul survives, I think it is more about how how is he after? Is he a better person, a worse person, or the same person? And, you know, here at the very start, it's not quite clear if he is, you know, he's behaving the way, you know, yeah, after the war, is the same way he behaved before he was first caught. You know, so the movie is very clearly setting up, you know, maybe he's the same person, and by the very end we see he is a more hopeful and open person, at least by the very end. And let's see... Um... What did I write? Um, oh, right, right, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. Before the transition back to before the the you know before the concentration camp, you know she, you know they're they're like kissing or about to kiss, and she sees the 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 numbers from the the yeah concentration camp. And let's see, then we have the, um, yeah, um, you know, he assumed that she was a sex worker of some kind, maybe a, a prostitute, uh, you know, and, you know, she does end up taking the money. It shows that he thinks, he basically has a, a an expectation of relationships as being transactional, you know, and that's something that he struggles to, to really put behind him. And very smooth transition back to, yeah, 1936, and yeah, you know, we see that he, you know, one of the, the people who he evidently knows, you know, they're on first name basis. That guy just joined the Nazi party, and Saul doesn't say anything, even though, like, you know, very likely this guy knows that, that Saul is Jewish, but he's maybe got, like, special status, because they think of him as... He's, you know, he's he's one of the good ones. And, yeah, not long after, you know, he 
faces some anti-Semitism, this, this young woman who's with, yeah, with this guy, and, you know, she, first she, you know, she hears his last name, and then says, oh, Russian, I hope you're not a communist, and then, you know, she wonders, what, what's the name Saul, that's a, I haven't heard that name before, and, you know, the, the guy that she's with says it's short for Solomon, and, you know, she realizes, and she doesn't say anything, but she does immediately walk away. You know, so, so yeah, clearly, you know, which, which, frankly, she probably had things she wanted to say. Maybe she wanted to spit in his face. But he's, like, again, currently his status is, is high enough. She's worried about getting in trouble. And I do appreciate, you know, when movies... Again, I think it's important that we acknowledge there were women who supported the Nazis. That's not a misogynistic thing to say. You know, we, we have to... Again, if we act like, oh, this group is just flawless, we're not going to be able to fully process... You know, and I do appreciate the movie doesn't say that women were worse. That you know, just just in general, it it's not really a misogynistic movie. It doesn't have a lower opinion of women than men. There's not a huge amount of major female characters, but then it is set in a concentration. You know, most of the duration of it is within a concentration camp. I'd say maybe an hour of this ninety minute movie, ninety one minute movie. You know. Yeah, the it it was. Yeah, there's there wouldn't be a lot of of chances for that, but yeah, it acknowledges you know women as well as men in Nazi Germany were anti-Semitic. And let's see. Yeah, and he meets the the resistance people and you know he points out you're looking what was it conspicuously inconspicuous I think it was yeah and yeah you know it's clear like Saul doesn't really mind whether the people around him or at least he doesn't he doesn't say he you know he he says I th uh, I guess it's not very long after he 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 makes the the rather dubious claim that you know the problem the reason that people don't like Jewish people is because they just don't want to what was it assimilate integrate something like that which is absurd the the there are many instances where Jewish people have attempted to assimilate you know like the thing they won't do is give up their faith because that's extremely important to them obviously you know and and there's a lot of Christians who would never give up their faith so the yeah but you know again that's maybe part of why he's seen as one of the good ones because he he doesn't stand up for you know himself based on his his faith or other Jewish people but but yeah, you know, he he's you know the people around him, some are Nazis, some are anti-Semitic, but maybe not quite Nazis, and some are resistance members, you know, he doesn't really care. He claims to be apolitical. Which you know, it's it's the idea of being apolitical, like I suppose children are apolitical but you know other than that the, the no, no one is truly apolitical and it's especially absurd in in this kind of situation but yeah and 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 you know that's his um, survival strategy which you know we we learn he's been in prison multiple times yeah, um, there are a number of, of ex-cons 
who work really hard to make sure that the people around them don't at all feel uncomfortable around them. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Now, the... let's see... Yeah, and and they they dance and end up having sex. I really appreciate, you know, the the movie. There's not really anything for the sex scenes to say, you know. The the I I'm not I'm not prudish at all. The the I think ideally. If you're putting a sex scene in a movie like this, it should be saying something. It should be conveying something about the relationship between the people. You know, if, don't put a sex scene that's just like fertilization in a holocaust, in a, yeah, concentration camp movie. You know, but, but yeah, it's the, the, um, yeah, it never, it never outright shows sex. It's always like, we see right before and and not long after but that's yeah that's basically it and let's see yeah you know she's lying there in bed and he's got the the pencil and paper and she gets up like why don't you draw a picture it'll last longer and then we meet Herzog, who is snarky from right away, just like, yeah, you know, and the, let's see, yeah, then he goes to the first concentration camp, and immediately we see the, the capo beating another convict, and one of the convicts are shot, and, you know, he, he does the, the prison rule thing of, you know, the guy comes up to, to try to try to hit him and he says, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll stab you if you, if you touch me, something like that, you know. And quite good detail with, you know, he, he, yeah, he draws the thing and yeah, then it, it, it goes all. You know, Shawshank Redemption, he gets to, gets to, he is drawing pictures of several, and there's this one bit where you see this apple that, you know, some, at least one bite has been taken out of, and, you know, cuts, and when it cuts back, the apple is, is gone, because, yeah, you know, he, he, beggars can't be choosers. And not long after we see you know, now he's getting, like, bread and sausage as he's drawing these. And, you know, so, so yeah, right, you know, he is, he's good at fitting in even when the people around him hate his guts. And that's how he's made it so long. You know, there's a lot of people who don't survive prison at all. And... Yeah, so they're they're moved, and the the you know the guard comes in and you know gives some some uh, uh, soup, and someone pointed you know there's a um, yeah in the in the IMDb goof section someone pointed out you know f for one thing it wouldn't be a, a German a German guard would not interact directly with prisoner, it would be another prisoner that would serve food, and the prisoners were seldom fed during transports. And, yeah, you know, I, I think that it's a perfectly ex acceptable, you know, yeah, because it, it is this thing of, you know, both both what the, the German guard says and also what you know, the, the fact that afterwards Saul gives his soup to to the kid who clearly needs it more than, than he does. So we're seeing, you know, he does have some empathy in him still. But but yeah, you know, the, the, the guard comes in and, you know, serves the food, 
and then he says, you smell like a staple. And now, I don't know if this exact thing happened, but I have read accounts where certainly similar, you know, happened. And it is classic, like, it's the kind of thing that, you know, bullies and, and people with power in a dictatorship and that sort of thing do. Yeah, I can imagine he smells like a stable. That's because you put him in a stable. You know, that that's the that's kind of how smell works. If you're in a place that has a distinct smell, that smell follows you. And you're talking to him while he's inside the stable. But, you know, this guy, he just you know, if you if you look at it, the I'm not making excuses for Nazis. I'm explaining giving context. <clears throat> It was completely unacceptable. But basically, what it came from was that there was a lot of physical discipline. You know, people were beaten by teachers and parents and such in, in Germany back then. So you had a lot of young men who had a lot of anger inside them. And then Hitler came along and said, be angry at Jewish people, which there was already a lot of anti-Semitism but yeah, that's you know that's where that comes from, and knowing that can help prevent those things from happening in the future. And yeah, um, you know, Saul says, you know, I don't speak Russian. I, I don't like to speak Russian anymore. I had a family, and only later do we find out what it was that that happened to them. And, yeah, they arrive at uh, Sachhausen, I believe it's pronounced, that camp. And, yeah, Herzog comes back, you know, he, and, and he's, like, flaunting, you know, I've, when I arrested you, I got a promotion. And the, the, let's see, yeah, the, the, they are, there's the, what's the word, there's the, the clothes, you know, and, yeah, you know, the clothes were from prisoners who have been, yeah, who were, who were killed during the Holocaust. And as such, Adolf, you know, refuses to, to put it on, and Herzog Basically, you know, the, the, unless there was a mistranslation, you know, the subtitles were in Danish, not English, he pretty much just says, well, yeah, whatever, they're, they're second hand, you know. He, he doesn't really think, because, you know, he has a family himself. He, you know, when, when it's beneficial for him, He'll, he'll try to appeal to Saul's, you know, empathy and humanity, but he can't, you know, yeah, he, can, he can't empathize with these Jewish people. And, let's see, yeah, and he's handing out cigarettes to basically, you know, be more popular with them. And we're we're told about the the running, ah, what was the word, um, the run running squad. You know, punished in shoes that are too small, and you know, running with with sandbags, carrying sandbags. And yeah, once they they get once Saul and the others get in, you know, we're. Were shown, you know, yeah, the the capo yells, but just for show, you know, the moment that he sees, oh, we have a new arrival, you know, he's talking to him like a human being. So it's very clear that this is a very different situation. And let's see. yeah, uh, in order to. Let's see. 
yeah, in order to to keep spirits high as much as can be, you know, they're they're singing. Although, you know, one of the one of the other prisoners says, you know, he doesn't like that. I'm not going to repeat what he said, but it's basically he doesn't like that it's African American music. And yeah, some of them are dancing, and one is telling like these edgy jokes. And let's see, yeah, and and you know, there's this fear: is this a gas chamber, or is it actual? Is it an actual shower? And uh, yeah, Sol does manage to to rescue Adolf, but the the con, the other con, is shot, and yeah, turns out it is a shower, and I appreciate, like, the, the, it's very realistic, there's one of them, he's so panicked about the idea that they're being gassed, that at first he doesn't even, like, the water is spraying on all of them, and he's still, like, I think it's, it's Saul who's, like, shaking him and saying, look, it's, it's water, it's water, it's a shower, it's a shower, you know, because he's so and and that the the trauma of believing that he's going to be executed that all of these others are to be executed which you know he already knows that's happened to a lot you know a lot of jewish people so yeah you know it it actually it he is so traumatized he's so um, distraught over it that it actually it, it takes him it, it he needs someone else to to you know point out no it's it's water it's you know his his senses basically have, have temporarily ceased to function you know he he should he, he should be able to tell from from the way it feels on his skin he should be able to see it Maybe even smell it, you know, but, yeah. Hear it, baby, yeah, all, all six of his senses should be going off. And then we have the, yeah, you know, um, Saul is not able to, to rescue the guy who, you know, he was in Sobibor, he lied so that they would move him, you know. And, and Herzog has the gall to say we're on the same side here and and yeah the again there are actual accounts of actual nazis who seemed that to to so thoroughly not realize how monstrous they were being to these human beings that of course they didn't see as human beings you know that uh, I don't know. I just feel like that makes it worse. Not only do did the Nazis want to be able to get away with treating Jewish people as subhuman, they also wanted credit. They wanted like, no, I'm. It's not that bad. We're on the same side here. I'm being nice to you. And yeah, there's the the revelation. You know, Saul Saul, Saul realizes. You know, it's the the type of paper was wrong. That's part of what, yeah. And yeah, Adolf talks to him about fighting back. And yeah, it's very clear. I'm afraid I did. I, I Kolya, I think was his name. Um, you know, that's not fever. It's tuberculosis. And. Let's see. Yeah, and and you know he he says I want to live long enough to to survive being in this camp. You know he's he's young and naive. He doesn't, you know, and and none of like most of the other people in the camp are older than him. They realize this is not you know we're not the, like at the end of the movie it is you know they do end up surviving it, but that's not something that any of them think is super likely before that you know that's something that we we take for granted today at the time there was a lot of world war 2 where 
the idea that the Nazis would lose, lose so dramatically, lose so soon, relatively speaking soon, was just not something that very many people truly believed. Like, hoped for, sure, but not, like, something that they actually think is going to happen. But, but yeah, you know, he's acting like it's a normal prison stay, and he just has to serve his sentence, which is, you know, there's a lot of prisons where that's also not the case. And, yeah, you know, the, the one guy realizes, you know, his family were were killed and and he yeah he cuts his wrist and the tension when you know like Herzog could easily just come out and say you did a good job the 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 bills were completely convincing but no he has to start with so one of our agents walked into a bank with some of the bills you printed, you know, and, and like, they're in suspense, we're in suspense, and he's just doing this to fuck with them. He knows that there's no, like, this is supposed to be a success story. He's telling them, you did good, now you can move on to this other thing we need you to do, but no, he, you know, it's just sadism. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, when he's, the the this thing of making the the yeah the bills convincing or it's it's something you know it, again like it's basically a good thing but Herzog has to turn it into you know he says oh you Jews you're so good at tricking people like they did what you asked you asked them to do this they succeeded and you say this really hateful thing but you know so it's it's very much this lose lose situation you know if they do the thing they're being asked to do they get it's, you know this insult that that targets the very cuz that was a thing that the nazis and still today sadly you know there's it's a very common anti-semitic trope that the jewish the jewish people are inherently more likely to try to trick people or steal or take or manipulate that sort of thing than anyone else when really like there are some cases where that's you know but when you look at the actual data it usually boils down to they were desperate so they did something that some would say oh you shouldn't do that but they were doing it to survive like what I always say when someone said, you shouldn't do that, even if it was necessary for survival, why don't you try it? Why don't you put yourself in that situation and see how strong-willed you are when you're starving, when your family is starving? And let's see. Yeah, we see... Saul, very popular, everyone, like, pats the shoulder and, like, you know, big smiles and, because he really did, you know, if, if he hadn't come through for them with the type of paper, yeah, they might have been executed for him. And then, you know, Adolf insists they, they have to try to commit sabotage and he keeps ruining the, the gelatin and dares Saul to report him, obviously knowing, you know, like, if Saul, if Saul, if Solomon does that, yeah, that's, you know, he's gonna regret it for the rest of his life. And, yeah. They, they hear that there are problems on the Eastern Front, and that's, again, you know, today it's, it's, like I mentioned, it's easy to take for granted that they ended up losing. That was a major turning point. They, they really, for a while, they actually thought. And it's like when you, when you actually like look at a map, like it's completely absurd. Of course they couldn't take Russia. 
Like, just, it's, it's completely ridiculous. But, you know, Hitler wanted Stalingrad, Stalin wanted to keep Stalingrad, and both men were motivated primarily by ego, because it has Stalin's name on it. So, if Stalin has it, that's a sign he has power. If Hitler gets it, that's a sign he has power. And, you know, I, f I forget the exact number. That actually is a decent... I can find that real quick. Um, Eastern Front, World War II. Yeah, of the estimated 70 to 85 million deaths attributed to World War II, around 40 million occurred on the Eastern Front. Because it had Stalin's name on it. Now, the... Yeah, and the... the uh, uh, Holst, I think it was, you know, intentionally humiliates Solomon and I think it's maybe Collier who's like, why bother eating? And, you know, the... Yeah, because he's the he's the one who's also an, an art student, and and yeah, Solomon is like, come on, take a you know one spoonful for the avant garde, one spoonful for the you know the other the, it's just yeah, and and he's like, yeah, you you really know how to raise a kid, and yeah, we're told you know his he did have yeah his family back in Russia, or. I'm not certain if it was Russia, but it was a Russian-speaking country. You know, the communists, you know, sadly, like today, there's a, a lot of great communists, and, and I do think that is the way to go, but the Soviet Union were very, very, yeah, brutal to, to people. And, there, you know, he made the point, you know, if I had enough money, I could have bought their freedom, which is true. Soviet Union, a lot of corruption. And, yeah, you know, that's why he became good at forgery. That's why he started making counterfeit money. He couldn't... What's the word? Basically, it, it, he couldn't accept... You know, it's, it's, the, it's, like, it's magical thinking. You know, if, if I get good enough at doing this thing then maybe the, the, you know, maybe somehow they'll come back. And it's not that he intellectually, logically believes that, but just when you lose someone close to you, yeah, you might end up doing something that, though you don't logically believe that it'll bring them back, it makes you feel like you're doing something for them. And that also helps explain why it is he is so uh, reluctant to, to fight back. You know, he's already had this... Yeah, he you know, last time he fought... or we Actually, we don't even know if he fought back then, but... Fought back back then, but... You know, he already lost all but his own life. And... Um, oh, right, right, there's the, um, there's that bit where, you know, one of the guards shoots one of the Jewish people on the other side of the, uh, um, the wooden, yeah, and, you know, he gets yelled at, and, and the, you know, yeah, maybe it's Holst, maybe it's Herzog, some, someone else working for them, something like that, says, what are you doing? You can't shoot a Jewish person here. You could hit one of my Jewish people. You know, that's that's the problem. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to lose these. Yeah. Because they're they're doing what he wants them to do. They're they're useful to him. And yeah, there's the threat of, you know, in four weeks it has to yeah, we have to get, and, and there's also the, yeah, you know, this very distinct threat of, yeah, and the, the, the carnival 
is mentioned and yeah Solomon you know says we don't betray one of our one of our own which you know it, it really is like obviously it would actually like if if you wanted to be completely cynical and and detached from any kind of humanity about it technically it would seem to solve the problem if they gave up Adolf you know that would mean that they could finish making the bills and everybody else in the group has agreed we gotta finish making these bills you know and and Solomon protects him because that's not you know yeah there is a certain honor there and you know one of the others says what is this like prison honor something like that that's and yeah, the, we have the thing about, you know, they they claimed it was an escape attempt, and that was that's also something that has been documented. Nazis would, yeah, if they wanted to, to kill someone in one of these camps, sometimes they would say, oh, they were trying to escape. You know, we, we had to. But in reality, they just felt like it. And, you know, and didn't have enough humanity to, yeah stand by that and admit that that was what was going on and and you know the doctor says you know there in the other camp there was no medicine I decided I had to decide who to heal and who to let die and Herzog takes Solomon to meet his family you know just yeah and and the the um, we we very briefly meet his wife Grete and and you know she she thinks that he's representative of how Jewish people are being treated in the camps you know rather than the the exception you know she she believes the propaganda which again you know I I don't think this makes women the the entire you know all women look bad it's just pointing out you know outside of the camps a lot of people believe the propaganda and certainly you know if your husband works in one of these camps you don't want to believe that you married a monster and yeah you know the the um, Solomon agrees to to you know make the the dollar in exchange for the the medicine for uh, Kolya and again you know Herzog insults him even though he just got his way you know the, the you know he's he says something like you would even trade the lives of your own I mean I suppose that's one way to look at it but another way to look at it is you're willing to d d do this thing that you don't want to do as long as it saves a life, but that's not how Herzog is going to see it because that actually makes him look like the bad guy that he is, and Solomon look like you know someone making it a difficult choice, but in in order to try to save someone. And let's see, and then we have the um, uh, yeah yeah some of them beat. Adolf in order to to compel him into helping or you know into stop sabotaging the the dollar and you know one of the guys almost passes out when the you know confrontation and does pass out afterwards and and Solomon shows up and you know he made these completely convincing bills and and rescues them And we see the the carnival. I really appreciate that the movie doesn't like it's not you know oh you know let's have a light moment. It, no, it's there's still like sadness. Like it's clear that it's just you know they're laughing through the pain. It's not oh you know it's almost like it's not even you know we're not being treated terribly. And you know he uh, Solomon. Uh, what's the word? Like nicks his finger, 
and and like rubs some blood on Kolya's cheeks, and and he said, "You you said you wanted color, which you know he did earlier about the, you know because he said Odessa always looked blue to him, you know just, yeah." And let's see, yeah, and some some more jokes are told, and then you know. Holst shoots Kolya before he could get the the medication and then has the goal to say I did it for your sake you know he was a Jewish person but he died like a man just yeah incredibly disgusting and then you know not not long after they're they're told you know take apart the machines and they're not given an explanation, and then they're being yelled at for not immediately doing it. You know, the because the obvious thing is, as long as we're working these machines, we're we get to stay alive. If we have to take apart the machines so they're transported, does that mean that we're transported to where they're transported as well, or are we about to be executed? That's basically like they're just asking, "Are you going to kill us now?" And he gets mad at them. You know, because he has so thoroughly dehumanized. He he legitimately doesn't see them. You know, he's yelling at them like you might yell at, like, I guess, like, of, of, I know some people yell at their horse if the, the horse doesn't do what they're, they're telling it to do. Let's see... Yeah, and we have the the realization that the they aren't running anymore. And right, Solomon attacks Herzog, who begs for his life, and still doesn't seem like he can actually see any humanity in these Jewish people. He just, you know, yeah. And he's, he's like saying, oh, you know, I can't save every Jewish person. I'm, I'm doing the best I can. You know, Hulse did it without me saying, I, I mean, maybe he was following orders, but so am I. You know, just, yeah. It's, there's a certain catharsis to seeing a Nazi be that pathetic, but it is also, you know, I, I don't think that would be enough to justify the scene, but the fact that he still like he still can't recognize the the humanity like he he's more talking like he's trying to talk his way out of the the like let's say you you have a gambling problem and the the guy shows up and you're begging for just just give me a little more time i can win it back you know something like that he doesn't come across as someone who actually realizes that he's behaved like an absolute monster and yeah, the resistance and and all come, and 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 they're actually at first almost killed, mistaken for being Nazis, you know, un until they they show the 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 numbers from the the concentration camp. A really powerful scene, like the. You know, we know that Solomon is going to survive this because we've seen him after in the, you know, most of the movie is a flashback, but the, the framing device has shown this, but we don't know about the rest of them. And, you know, it would be bitterly ironic. Like, imagine thinking that you're executing a monster and realizing you were executing someone who was in a just slightly better position than you, but your own kind, you know, that... I don't, I don't know if you could ever recover from something like that. And, yeah, the movie ends with taking us back to after World War II, and he gambles all the money away, and, you know, the, the young woman, you know... Yeah, talk, talks to him again, and says, you know, oh, so much money, and it's all gone. And he says, I can always make new ones. And and they dance on the beach. And yeah, you know, that's like like I mentioned in the in the review itself, I don't think the ending quite has 
the the power that it means to and certainly I, th I I gotta say I think it's the weakest ending of one of these you know so so once again the other ones being Der Untergang Sufischal um the lives of others and I think Napola also had a more effective ending but it's been I don't think I've seen that in like 15 years so but I, I believe that one also had a, a more effective ending. But but yeah, you know, we're seeing for the first time it's like he is ready to try to start over. Which, you know, one can understand why he was reluctant to after losing his entire family in in the Soviet Union. But and and it is this thing, you know it's a it's a cliche, but it is true. Prison changes you and trauma changes you. And, and concentration camps, in addition to being prisons, had additional trauma, you know, inflicted additional trauma. And, yeah, you know, it, I'm, I'm not saying that it's like that someone is a bad person if they didn't come out stronger. Not at all. A lot of people, a lot of, a lot of strong people did, you know, crumble under all that pressure, and you can understand. But... Ultimately, you know, when, when we first meet him, he's he claims to be apolitical. He's basically pushed the pain down. You know, the the like he's he's harsher when talking to a guy who wants to to borrow money than to the the guy that's now a Nazi. You know, and and. Yeah, by the end, you know, he's ba he's basically, he's been broken down, and now he's building back up, kind of thing. And, yeah, I, I do think that it is, the, um, it's important to have a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel for this kind of thing. I do, if, if I, I already mentioned that I don't think that the movie needed to, to, Oh, right, and, and actually, yeah, this was the, the Oscar winner for Best Foreign Language Film in, let's see, in 2008, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that it was necessary to, to have too much, like, real-life information in this. I don't think it would have hurt, because this, so I'm going to read the verbatim from IMDb Trivia. Some experts believe the real-life counterfeit pounds were thwarted by nothing more than common courtesy. Honest Britons picked the airdropped bills off the streets, turned them over to the police, averting a financial disaster. Like, I, I think the ending, I think it would have been really powerful if that had been... Because we do get a little bit of narration, and it's the only time in the entire movie, at the very end, we get a little bit of narration... I think including that could have been really strong in part because it's thematically resonant, you know. Part of the reason that, like, there, there's this thing of, you know, they, 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 they don't make as many, as much, yes, they don't make as many American dollars as they were told to for a while, because of integrity, because of Al, Al names, sorry, Adolf's integrity, for, for some reason, sometimes names just really don't stick in my mind. I need them in front of me. But yeah, um, that was part of why that it took so long before they started making them. And it appears, I it's been a long time since I... I yeah, some, some years ago, I watched a documentary that talked about this. I believe that by then, the the war was so close to being over that they didn't have time. Because they could, like, if they had taken America out, if they had, financially, which was much more likely than militarily, you know, that was one of Hitler's many blunders. It was completely ridiculous to, to declare war on America you know, but but yeah, the the but the the yes, they hypothetically it could have been done with counterfeit money if America had been taken out of World War II, like 
I, I have made a lot of criticisms of American foreign policy. They did do, I've, you know, would have been nice if they had entered the war sooner. But once they did, they did actually, they, they made a significant difference. They, they shortened the war. And, yeah, if Operation Bernard had succeeded, yeah, that, that would have been so. I really think that that would have, yeah, having, having the fact that the, the money were picked off the street, turned over the, to the police, you know, also just the, the, you know, the Nazis losing because there were people out there who didn't do the wrong thing, you know, because, like, obviously, if you find money on the street, yeah, the right thing to do is to hand it over to the police. So, yeah. Um, there is a little bit... So, the deleted scenes... You know, I, I don't think that it needed to be in the movie. I don't think that it was a problem that this was cut, but I do want to share it with people who haven't watched them. You know, one of the deleted scenes establishes that Solomon can do sleight of hand. He uses it to trick the other prisoners into thinking they're losing fair and square in games over cigarettes. He later uses it to swap out a container so that Kolya, you know, um, will not be revealed as having tuberculosis. Because, you know, they, they have Kolya spit in a, you know, in a little container and then you know Solomon's like oh, hold on I'll, I'll write his name on it you know and, and grabs it you know, right and hands a container of spit to to the the German guard that you know says Kolya on it and you know then he reveals to the others no 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 that was actually just the the uh, what's the word um, that was my own spit, and I don't have tuberculosis. I just checked. Currently, the deleted scenes do not appear to be on YouTube. You would have to have a copy of the, the DVD for that. Uh, let's see if the behind-the-scenes... Um... also does not appear to be on yeah um, but but yeah um, that uh, I'm glad it was filmed I'm glad it's on the DVD ultimately it is you know it doesn't like ruin the movie that it wasn't there I really think the the it's a very powerful moment in the movie when you realize, you know, all of this was for nothing. You know, he agreed to make the the um, he agreed to make dollars, and you know, he had to talk to Herzog and and you know, yeah, ask for for medicine, and then you know, Holst just executes Kolya. You know, so that was, yeah. And, yeah, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. One or more links to stuff like relevant playlists. It's a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing small thoughts on a movie. I try to do a weekly one of a video game. I don't know... You know, I'm not going to be able to keep that up forever, but I'm going to try to do it for as long as I can. One talking about my spoiler film thoughts on the most... Uh, let's see. Right, yeah, there's not... That's okay. So there's not a current show. I try to do a weekly one where I talk about a horror thing. Right now, I'm working my way through Ash vs. Evil Dead, the, the TV show... And I am, let's see, the next episode will be episode 6 of season 1. I try to do a daily video where I talk about 
a Marvel show, either an MCU, you know, more or less continuity, or an X-Men show. Uh, right now, I am early in Legion. Going to be doing Season 1, Episode 2 later today. And uh, let's see... You know, I'm, I'm going to do all of those in the order that they first came out, although I did already do all of the Netflix ones. And uh, let's see. Right, and I try to do a weekly one in addition. Right now I'm doing animated Star Wars that I haven't already done. I'm almost done with Young Jedi Adventures. And then I'm going to subject myself to droids as well as uh, Ewoks. Yeah. And recently we've been thoughts videos to them out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I will catch you next time.